Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from Storage Review, and today we're taking a look at Samsung's brand new Magician 7 software. Uh, Magician, uh, Magician software in general is what Samsung puts out there to help users manage their SSDs, check performance, check uh, firmware updates, uh, what endurance, temperature, all sorts of other telemetry. Really? Any type of attribute, including probably warranty, you can get through this. Yeah, and so Samsung Magician 6 was the iteration before, and it's a you know widely popular tool again for Samsung SSD owners. So the reason why we're making this video on 7 is really because the 6 video did so darn well. It was our most popular video in 2020. Then it's really surprising. I mean, every other vendor, their interfaces are awful. They're not all awful. It looks like something that's written in like Visual Basic from 20 years ago. Okay, there are some that are miserable. We've beaten up who? Corsair lately for their awful, awful thing. I think Intel discontinued their toolbox. Um, Seagate's got one, WD's got one, but Samsung's continues to be the most premier of all of them. In fact, if two SSDs that you like are so similar in price and performance, Things like the toolbox really come in as a big differentiator in terms of why you might prefer one over the other. Uh, so Samsung's great. In 7, we've added uh, SSD portable SSD support, which is good because before that was a separate tool. Um, some performance tunings and a couple other things that are uh, progressive updates, right? Yeah. In certain devices, you'll have more information than others. Externals, you're kind of limited to uh, what information you can glean out of it, but there are some useful stats. Okay, and we've got a piece we'll link to up on the site. We'll link to it in the uh, in the description for the video that also has the grid in terms of what drives support which functionality. There's some security pieces that aren't supported across the portfolio, and there's a couple other things. So if you're wondering where your drive shakes out, uh, you can take a look at that. And then we're also going to show a couple different drives that we've got plugged into the system. We have a T7 portable. A 960 Evo and a 980 Pro. Okay, so quite the gamut of drives in the last couple of years. Yeah. Let's just get into it and take a look at uh, at the software here. Start. Go back to the, the main dashboard here. Yeah. So I, I don't know what is happening there. The what, only thing I don't like, besides the fact that there's an ad on it, but I mean, we'll give it to them, is... They have this little wavy dude. It's kind of. It looks like the ring from. Uh, well, the ring. The ring. See, I was gonna go with. Uh, I don't clean the toilets often at home, but when I do, I have this blue Lysol cleaner, and then you give that thing a flush, and that looks kind of like a, a flushy clean toilet. Yeah, and the strange thing is, it's, it's drawing your eye to the overall written uh, <laughs> figure on the right. drive, which it's not really. I mean. Yes, it does grow as time goes on, but it's not like an ever-changing thing. Like here's the like the dynamic latency of the drive or something. So, you know. I appreciate the effort visually. I mean, the dashboard's clean, but someone on the design team went a little off the rails when they figured out they had this uh, this uh, hollow lens kind of uh, graphic available to them. Yeah. But, I mean, it's pretty cool. So the 960 Evo, uh, that's the boot drive of the system, and it's underneath one of the uh, heat sinks on its Lenovo workstation. Now, if we compare that to one of the 980 Pros, I just stuck on an adapter card. That's uh, 49C, and, like, there are useful things you can pull out of this. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you look back at the uh, T7 external, you get to see its temperature uh, and uh, the amount written to the drive, but you don't. All these other fields are uh, blanked out. And if we go to SSD again, you get them for uh, performance optimization. Uh, we can change full performance mode, standard mode, uh, power saving mode. Um, usually, these uh, these types of things would be more useful on a uh, notebook than they would be a workstation. Um, but I guess if you've got your games on a 980 Pro and you really want every eye up out of that thing and you don't care about endurance or whatever else might, yeah. might be hit as a result, then that's okay. Yeah, and then you get uh, overall provisioning, uh, diagnostics, performance benchmarks. Performance benchmarks, uh, it's a, you're not gonna get more out of this than like a normal battery of tests, but it allows you to uh, capture results and track them over time. So say you start doing- Go ahead and your slam it once and see how long it takes while we're sitting here. Well, this too, which I think might be new in seven, is that they log them for a year. I think I've seen the logging in there uh, okay. in the past. Well, so maybe they've got some additional logging, but what? Uh, and you can also tune how you want to run the benchmarks on certain drives. Um, but if you're really, 
I don't want to say paranoid, but if you're really concerned about your drive's performance and just ran it on the first of every month after some period of time, you could see, am I losing performance? Is the, uh, is as I'm filling it up, am I giving up some performance? So I need to optimize my storage and, and hopefully you're not defragging the drive. No, don't do that. But they, you know, does it need to be trimmed or formatted and started fresh again or whatever? Yeah. And then you get access into the encrypted drive, uh, PSID revert, and then uh, secure erase uh, capabilities. I mean, there's a lot of useful aspects to this that um, you generally, like some things you could try and replicate at the OS level or in, inside the OS, but things the uh, like the performance uh, characteristics of the drive, you can't really do that. Over provisioning, you could figure out a way. To yeah, you could kind of force your way into it by eating up some uh, some of the capacity for possible yeah. write gains. But this makes it really easy, and you get little warnings like, "Hey, there's an update available," which will show that uh, out of the drives that are uh, in, you'll see which ones are uh, available to update. My guess is that actually it's not highlighted to download, but I think maybe because you're running the performance yeah, probably thing. Does. So let's see what's going on over there. Yeah, probably does not want to do anything drastic while performance test is running on a drive. We generally don't like to do firmware updates while other tasks <laughs> are happening on storage. Yeah, I'm probably not going to do this to the boot drive of this system uh, since we are recording video to it right now. But. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so the portable drive support is nice. Like you said, if you go hit that T7 again, there's not a lot available to you here, but some high level uh, diagnostics and temps. Yeah, we're not writing and, to the drive right now, but right, and and your endurance. So that's nice. They don't have uh, support for SD, micro SD cards, USB drives in here yet. Um, not that there's a lot to do there, but they Samsung does have a uh, authenticity tool for the SD cards that would be kind of neat just to merge in here, so it's all in one spot. Yeah. So here we see uh, some IOPS figures uh, bandwidth. Now it is important to note, this is an IE Pro, it's a Gen 4 drive, but it's in a Gen 3 slot. So that's why you're gonna see these uh, performance figures that are a tad on the low side for a Gen 4 device. Do you hate performance or you just put it in the first slot available? Well, the system only supports Gen 3. Oh, well. Yeah. So any slot available, although there, there is only one slot available in the system. <laughs> Um, okay. But you get access to all these cool little stats. You get to see how things change. Uh, and I think since there we're we courageous. Go. Now we're not uh, writing to it. We can go get this firmware update. Yeah, yeah, click it. What the heck? So firmware updates are kind of interesting because well, of the tool. How about let's not do this while recording video. What's it say it wants to do? You will uh, shut down the system after uh, 20 seconds. Okay, so we're not going to follow through with that. But you could, and maybe we'll do it after we um, stop the recording. But in terms of... Um, value to the to the consumer a lot of drives don't have these toolboxes at all no so how do you what's the firmware update process in that case um problematic because uh, or, or none at all if you're not well, an advanced user we've seen this with uh, i think it was when the uh, fison e16 uh, ssds were launched there was a big uh, performance boost that came out that uh, the different vendors of that drive had to try and tell their users like hey this thing is out there and your that type of experience is going to be drastically different depending on the vendor you go with. And then, is there a common tool? Is it a vendor tool? Is it the uh, controller vendor's tool? You're not really. It's not really a fantastic uh, experience. Or this, it prompts you. You'll have the thing running off in the background. It's going to probably bring a little pop up, like, "Hey, it's there. It's up to uh, like there's an update," which could be the performance or it could be a stability update depending mm -hmm. on the uh, severity of uh, what's changing. Yeah, or security possibly. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why you would want to grab the firmware updates. It's not like the early days of SSDs were for, for a period of time we were seeing some of them getting updates Man, monthly. Sample. There was a time, before, I think it was right before uh, Intel uh, brought in that uh, their Sandforce uh, controller uh, internal to, uh, I think it was the 525 or 530. There was a major update that, uh, update that came out after that, but until that time, I mean, you had updates like in certain cases every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So uh, the updates can get pushed out for SSDs a number of, of different ways. This tool, though, lets you manage your Samsung drive and go get them as soon as Samsung makes them available. You don't have to wait for it to show up through Windows Update. You don't have to go through some convoluted 
process and you know. I don't think you can do firmware on an SSD for Windows Update. Well, there you go. So this is even better then in, in that case. Uh, we don't see firmware updates as much anymore, but when they do come out, they're generally for a purpose and to Kevin's point, will give you oftentimes better reliability, uh, better performance or, or sometimes security as well. So it's nice to have around. This tool is another great release from Samsung. The cost is nothing. If you have a Samsung drive, uh, it's worth grabbing, maybe not just for a portable SSD. There's not a ton there that you need. Uh, but if you like to monitor things, then go grab it. For an SSD, this is a must have, right? Yeah, definitely. All right, we'll put a link to the download in the uh, in the video description as well. And if you're a Samsung SSD user, go snag this tool.